When New Horizons arrived at Pluto on July 14, 2015, it made history. After all, no man-made object had ever ventured into the realm of the icy dwarf planet before. In fact, the NASA probe's mission was set to revolutionize our view of this tranquil celestial body. While Pluto had long been considered a rather unspectacular dark chunk of ice orbiting far beyond the major planets, New Horizons proved that it's actually a cosmic wonderland full of geological mysteries and astonishing structures. But what strange formations really do exist on Pluto's surface? And why is it conceivable that life has even flourished on this bitterly cold, extreme world? Be sure to stay tuned until the end and see for yourself what thrilling secrets Pluto has already revealed. On February 18, 1930, the world of astronomical research was enriched by an absolutely sensational discovery. This was the day that American astronomer Clyde Tombaugh succeeded in locating Pluto, another member of our planetary system. At the same time, the history of this small celestial body is inextricably linked to an 11-year-old girl from Oxford. After the Lowell Observatory asked the public for suggestions for a name, Venetia Bernay came up with the name of the Roman god of the underworld and thus ensured that we have known the planet as Pluto ever since. Well, although the term planet is now relative, of course, as we know, Pluto was expelled from the official ranks of our planetary neighborhood in August 2006. But how did that actually happen? Well, it's quite simple. After experts discovered more and more Pluto-like objects in the Kuiper Belt, the International Astronomical Union decided to redefine the term planet. The aim was to prevent the list of planets in the solar system from bursting at the seams. Otherwise, their number might have risen to dozens or even hundreds. Since then, to be considered a planet, a celestial body must orbit the Sun, have an approximately spherical shape, and have a clear orbit of other objects. Ultimately, it was the last point that sealed Pluto's fate as a planet and moved it into the newly created category of dwarf planets. When NASA's New Horizons probe plunged into the vast expanses of space on January 19, 2006, Pluto was still considered a full-fledged planet, but by the time it finally arrived, that was long since history. Since Pluto is on average around 5.9 billion kilometers away from Earth, it took the spacecraft a good nine years to cover this immense distance. However, it should be noted at this point that the distance between the two celestial bodies varies greatly due to their elliptical orbits, oscillating between just under 4.3 and a good 7.5 billion kilometers. What does not vary, however, is the difference in size between Pluto and our home planet. While the diameter of Earth is around 12,740 kilometers, Pluto, with a diameter of 2,377 kilometers, is even smaller than our moon. As a result, it has only 0.2% of Earth's mass. But when it comes to coal, our home planet clearly comes out on top. While Pluto consists mainly of rock and a mantle of water and nitrogen ice, the thermometer on its surface drops to an average of minus 232 degrees Celsius. This is primarily due to its enormous distance from the sun, in fact, sunlight takes an average of five and a half hours to reach Pluto. In the case of Earth, it only takes about eight minutes and 20 seconds. At the same time, however, the dwarf planet does not have a dense atmosphere that could store heat or create a greenhouse effect. What it does have, however, is a handful of companions. After all, we now know of five Pluto moons, of which Charon is by far the largest. However, since it's more than half the size of Pluto itself, with a diameter of 1,212 kilometers, and the duo's center of gravity lies far outside Pluto, many experts prefer to refer to it as the Pluto-Charon binary system. Furthermore, these celestial bodies are the only ones known in the solar system to have a double-bound rotation, which simply means that they always face the same side. From giant hearts to bizarre ice volcanoes, what New Horizons discovered on Pluto. And now let's turn our attention to the exciting discoveries made on the dwarf planet. After New Horizons became the first space probe in history to reach Pluto on July 14, 2015, it sent back spectacular images showing a celestial body that was completely different from what had been expected. In fact, 
The first New Horizons images prove that Pluto has its heart in the right place. And that is meant quite literally. After all, its surface is adorned with the so-called Tombaugh Regio, a gigantic heart-shaped structure made of frozen nitrogen ice that reflects a particularly large amount of sunlight. In the western half of the heart, the 1,200 kilometer wide and approximately 2,000 kilometer long lowland region known as Sputnik Planitia, the nitrogen ice also forms thick, strikingly angular clumps. But what is the story behind this strange formation? Well, even if the heart may seem quite romantic at first glance, it probably testifies to a not-so-gentle rendezvous. Experts believe that the Tombo Regio is the result of a 700-kilometer-wide object made of ice and rock that once crashed diagonally and relatively slowly into Pluto's outer surface. Also crashing into Pluto's outer surface is the mixture spewed out by its volcanoes. However, these are not fire mountains in the classic sense, but rather a fascinating form of cryovolcanism. The images taken by New Horizons have revealed that, despite its distance from the sun and its freezing temperatures, Pluto is an astonishingly dynamic world. It has flowing glaciers, ice flows shaped by convection currents, and even winds fueled by the outgassing of frozen nitrogen from Sputnik Planitia. And when it comes to so-called ice volcanism, the New Horizons images show dome-like mountains with central depressions that are strongly reminiscent of volcanoes. Particularly striking are Wright Muns and Picard Muns, two gigantic structures about four kilometers high with diameters of up to 200 kilometers. However, in true Pluto style, these do not spew boiling hot lava, but cold, icy substances such as water, ammonia, or methane. Researchers suspect that some heat is still retained beneath the surface, possibly due to radioactive decay inside. This residual heat could be enough to keep the water-ammonia mixtures deep inside in a liquid state. These would then be forced out through cracks or fissures, similar to magma in Earth's volcanoes. A subglacial ocean? The evidence for this cryovolcanism is particularly significant because Pluto has long been classified as geologically dead. But that's not all. Here's the kicker. There could actually be a liquid ocean hidden beneath the celestial body's thick ice crust. This has not yet been proven conclusively, but there are at least strong indications that Pluto is hiding a wet secret. According to the researchers, this is suggested by the tectonic stretch marks detected by New Horizons, which suggests that the dwarf planet has undergone a phase of global expansion. Combined with thermal models, these characteristic features suggest that a vast ocean is sloshing beneath Pluto's surface. But how is that even possible? Surely the ocean would have frozen solid long ago in the icy outer reaches of the solar system. Well, not necessarily. On the one hand, there is the presumed residual heat from radioactive decay, and on the other hand, perhaps an insulating layer of methane hydrate that could also keep the underground sea liquid. In addition, scientists are also discussing the possibility that it was the impacts of planetary building blocks that served as cosmic heat suppliers in Pluto's early phase. In this scenario, the dwarf planet would have begun its history as a warm object with liquid water before cooling over time and becoming the icy chunk we know today. But regardless of how Pluto's ocean is kept liquid, if it really does exist, the question immediately arises as to whether it could also harbor living organisms. After all, water in its permanently liquid form is considered a fundamental pillar for the development of life. However, we should not forget that the suspected ocean beneath Pluto's surface is most likely not made up of pure water, but rather a mixture of water and ammonia. Similar to the antifreeze we are familiar with, ammonia significantly lowers the freezing point of water. In addition, traces of other substances could also be present here, such as methane and carbon monoxide, or salts, which would also influence the physical properties of the ocean. But the bottom line, and this is the exciting part, is that it's theoretically possible that this warped world could actually provide a habitat for any Pluto inhabitants. However, Experts agree that these would not be highly developed underwater creatures, but rather the simplest of organisms. This is indicated by the traces of water on the nearby hemisphere, which have left behind a reddish, shimmering discoloration. This discoloration is in turn an indication of a high concentration of organic molecules, 
and thus of the prerequisite for life. Their origin may lie in cosmic radiation or solar wind, and experiments have proven that such complex, reddish compounds can form when molecules such as water, methane, or nitrogen are exposed to radiation bombardment. If ammonia is also present, even the bases that we find in RNA and DNA can form. What is particularly exciting is that the article published on this topic by a team led by New Horizons researcher Dale Cruikshank in the journal Astrobiology lists evidence suggesting that Pluto's ice is not only red, but also contains ammonia. However, the authors emphasize that this is by no means proof that the dwarf planet actually harbors extraterrestrial life. The results only show that microscopic creatures could survive there. Despite this, the article was well received by experts, as the red band runs across Pluto's equator, which is the zone that receives the most sunlight and has the warmest climate. And the subscribe button is located in the area that receives the most clicks. Just click the thumbs up and subscribe now to never miss a new video from us again. We'll see you soon.